Now I invite Dr. Dipankar Dotto from Kolkata to give his speech. Good morning. It's my honor actually to give oration in Dr. Khoshet Mojumdar's name. So it is my honor and privilege. Thank you, sir. And thanks to Bangladesh Sleep Apnea Association, that is Association of Sleep Apnea Surgeons of Bangladesh, ASAB, uh, for inviting me. I am always here. Today, my topic for this oration is recent advances in OSA. Medical science is a dynamic science. And in fact, any science is dynamic. We continuous, continuously, there is evolvement and there is furthering of science and technology. Our philosophy changes with passage of time. We deal with failures and that gives us insight how to proceed further and how to make it more patient friendly and society friendly so as to come out with the best possible result. So there is continuously evolvement of different kinds of advancement in any medical discipline. And not to say about obstructive sleep apnea, to say the least, because it is, there are lots of gray areas still in sleep science. So sleep is a dynamic event, and the sleep science is even more dynamic. So there is a need to introspect about what are the recent advances going on across the world and our next generation, our future generation, what is the futuristic approach? What is our future in next one decade or two decades? Where are we heading to? So sleep apnea is a global burden. If you look at this uh, atlas, it is a global atlas. India, currently India is actually the diabetic capital. Yesterday there was a talk going on regarding the implications of hormonal influences, obesity, diabetes and sleep apnea. India is a diabetic capital in the world and probably India is going to be the sleep apnea capital in the world in very soon because currently India is the, our country is the highest population country in the world. We have surpassed China. I don't know whether that is a credit or discredit, but it is fact. We have surpassed China and we have the highest population country in the world. So all the major populous country in the world, starting from our country, then China, then US, Brazil, then France, Germany, Russia, all this country is a hugely prevalent obstructive sleep apnea. And these are uh, data from United States. Undiagnosed sleep apnea, if we look at the hidden health crisis, in the US, the estimated economic cost of undiagnosed obstructive sleep apnea was nearly $150 billion in 2015. Probably it is even more now, it is 2023. Starting from lost productivity, workplace accidents, motor vehicle accidents and comorbid disease. Just during the concluding remark of the previous talk, the chairperson sir was telling the society and the governance, our administration has to come up. Sleep apnea is such a disease. Unless and until we involve our administration, it is impossible to come out of the best possible outcome. Because this drowsy diving, workplace accidents, motor vehicle accident and this workplace less productivity because of lack of sleep the previous night. It is a huge cost implication and we are actually losing our finance. So what are the recent advances in sleep research? Phenotyping is the key as Dr. Jogesh Nupane was telling in his uh, morning talk yesterday also. Whole world is going by phenotyping. We need to individualize 
each and every one patient. Since 1980s, three core principles have described respiratory sleep medicine. The clinical pattern of male obese patients who snow and experience excessive daytime sleepiness. The definition and grading of obstructive sleep apnea based on the apnea hypopnea index and the predominant treatment with positive airway pressure. That was there since 1980s and during 1981 Colin Sullivan introduced CPAP. But nowadays OSA is considered a heterogeneous disease determined by various symptoms, anthropometric dispositions, polysomnographic patterns, long-term outcomes and comorbidities are taken into account. If you look at this total gamut, different spectrum, starting from AHI, vigilance stress, hypoxic burden, microRNA questionnaire and biomarker, then we need to introspect about the outcome, mortality, morbidity. We need to introspect about the anthropometric parameters, age, gender, body weight, metabolic disease, comorbidity, COPD, cardiovascular implications. We need to implications about the sleepiness, that is nighttime symptoms and daytime symptoms, and positional OSA, REM OSA, polysomnography variations, and not to say about the Danny Eckert, Otto Malhotra, David White groups proposition of palm scale that is peak read, arousal response, loop gain and muscle response that is the current concept of pathophysiology of obstructive sleep apnea and it is known as Eckert model. Last 10 years whole world is following this model only till further improvement this is the latest and we are following it. So how sleep apnea happens? Not only all obese patients sleep apnea, not lean and thin person means he is not snoring candidate, it is not. So how does it happen? So dilatation of the upper airway, anatomical constrictions and the muscle response and the proportion between the inspiratory drive and the pulmonary capacity that is the loop gain. So present and current knowledge and perspective on the treatment of OSA focuses on an individualized treatment based on specific phenotypes and follows the distinct pathophysiological traits. 100 years earlier, sleep studies were initially recorded on analog polygraphs because before discussing about any kind of recent advances and futuristic approach, it is always prudent to look back at the history. And 100 years earlier, this was the picture of the then polysomnograph machines occupying almost a whole room. They used lots of papers. For example, two sleep studies, just only two sleep studies could use enough paper to require over a cubic feet of space. These studies had to be saved for seven years. The polygraphs themselves were huge, measured almost five to six feet in height and weighed a couple of hundred pounds, not to say about paper cuts and ink stains. So there was need for advancement. So what are the recent advances in sleep diagnostics? Type 1 polysomnography, that is level 1 sleep labs came up. Subsequently, level 2, that is level 1 sleep study at home unmonitored, followed by level 3 came up and subsequently level 4 like smart watches. So type 3 sleep study, you all are conversant with this gadget, the famous Apnea Link Air and Alice Night One by Philips and Resmet. They record five channels, nasal flow, respiratory effort, oxygen saturation, pulse and snoring device. These are portable, more popular, patient friendly, patient can stay and get it done at his own home. And not to say about those full room occupied polysomnograph machine, not to say and not even going to a sleep lab and spending overnight outside, particularly in the post-COVID era. This is actually the current trend and future. Then Watchpad by Itamar, which uses peripheral arterial tonometry and actigraphy principle. Aries by Watermark, utilizes forehead venous impedance and electroencephalogram leads. Then Type 4 device, that is the latest one, that is one sleep test, a new system for the diagnosis of OSA that measures and analyzes 
the above mentioned parameters called night owl. The system consists of night owl sensor and night owl software. Eight set based principle, it is also based upon the peripheral artery altonometry, capable of multi night testing and validated against in lab time PSG. Recent advances in sleep therapeutics. So, mechanical obstruction, there are plenty of developments regarding the weight reduction protocol starting from diet we used to know, diet, physical exercise, pharmacotherapy, bariatric surgery, and there are plenty of drugs like phentermine, orlistat, liraglutide, plenty of drugs coming up as modern and rational treatment of weight reduction. So there is a huge lot of improvement in the pharmacological therapy of weight reduction. So positive air pressure treatment was there. I am not going into details, resulting from 29 to 83% of success rate. But the remote access titration management is the current trend and the future, that is GPS-based tracking of the patient, hunt down the patient, track them and make them CPAP compliant. That means patient sitting at say Sydney or Turkey, you are sitting here in Dhaka and track the patient whether he is using the machine and how long his machine and adjust his AHI just sitting across the continent. Then mandibular advancement devices. In the 2021 European Respiratory Society ERS guideline compared custom made adjustable dual block mat with CPAP in patients with mild to severe OSA, preferably without any comorbidities. And for the future, it will be important to use new grading system that consider more aspect of OSA severity than just AHI alone to make them more MAD respondent. Positional therapy, there is a recent change in the definition of positional therapy. I must share with you all. Originally, positional OSA, that is POSA, was suggested for patients with AHI in supine position double or greater than that in non-supine position that was known as supine predominant OSA. The current definition has been refined. Nowadays, the AHI in the non-supine posture should be less than 5 and we call it supine isolated OSA. That means when the patient is in the supine position, there is OSA but when if we make the patient in the non-supine position, it is even less than 5. And these are the two machines, night shift and night balance in the international market. Now maxillomandibular advancement, there is a change in concept. Initially MMA was primarily indicated for overweight, skeletal patients, dental plus 2 malocclusion but presently MMA selection criteria is more individualized and based on patient phenotyping, taking into account clinical and polysonographic evaluation and complete lateral pharyngeal wall collapse and complete consentive collapse are two important candidates of MMA I told you yesterday. Nowadays, virtual surgical planning I had shared with you yesterday, that is VSP3 dimensional printing and further aid in the individualizing the MMA surgical plan. A more recent advance for individualization of MMA is the implementation of the splintless orthognathic protocol I had shown in the video yesterday. So let me skip this. And the maxillary expansion. Current adult maxillary expansion techniques include surgically assisted rapid maxillary expansion that is SARME and distraction osteogenesis maxillary expansion that is DOME and segmental leafwood one osteotomy and pediatric patients are coming up in a big way in this gamut. Upper airway muscle activity, another newer modality, their tagline is first daytime therapy for nighttime OSA by signifier, the excite OSA. There are plenty of controversy and uh, I, I should say controversy, there are different school of thought and opinion how far this is effective. But for the simple snoring and the mild sleep apnea patient, mild functional therapy has a role, be it analog or gadget based. This the gadget is known as Excite OSA. Now, hypoglossal nerve stimulation, enough of it, Dr. Mutin has described. Now, the current and future trend. I will finish with this telemedicine. Sleep studies should work well with telemedicine, creating a new branch called telepolysomnography or just shortly telesomnography. That means level 1 study, we cannot call them level 2 anymore because it is monitored. But patient will lie, patient will sleep at his own home. Your technician and your department sitting here in your city. But totally tracked and totally gadget and sky best and GPS tracked. This is telemedicine. 
Now, smartphone apps coming up in a big way. Smart home. In a smart home, devices are connected to one another via internet, Wi-Fi, and these are the activities, the either by voice, motion, or iPad or smartphone. Any device that uses electricity can potentially be connected to the internet, and these devices are known actually as the internet of things and guided by AI, artificial intelligence. In our country, Government of India has a separate website for artificial intelligence. This is India AI. And application of artificial intelligence is sleep medicine. This is our central government's statement. For the past few years, there has been a rapid emergence of artificial intelligence enabled technology in the field of sleep medicine. The practice of sleep tracking and measuring the physiological signals in sleep has been widely practiced around the world. Hence, sleep monitoring in lab and ambulatory environments increase massive amount of data that uniquely positions the industry to gain more AI-enabled sleep science. And AI in sleep medicine, there's an American Academy of Sleep Medicine position statement. The goal is an AI integrated should be augment, not replace the existing expert evaluation of sleep data. That means man behind the machine AI will not replace, it will just augment our expertise. And Internet of Things are all the gadgets. These are all IoT, all are off, or can, your mobile is also an IoT. And Global Share, health is a big thing, connected health, and nanomedicine. Manipulation of individual atoms and molecules to create little machines that can be programmed to perform specific tasks. Nanoparticles being designed to, for introduction directly into the body of the diagnosis and therapeutic purposes, including disease prevention, using nanomedicine for both diagnostic and treatment of obstructive sleep apnea is the future, using nanobots to monitor everything from brain waves, heart waves, and even respiration. These nanobots would be either inhaled, injected, or swallowed, just like capsule endoscopy, maybe in the long run, it is not too far away, we will do capsule polysomnography. And the changing face of internet, the insurance in an effort to keep the medical costs down. Home sleep apnea test is actually the future and insurance companies are actually thriving on this. Maybe till date in India, sleep study is not covered by insurance, but if we can create more data and submit to them, just like Western world, maybe in the long run insurance will cover home sleep apnea test. And not only Danny Eckert's palm model, if you Google palm, there is completely separate. It is not picrit arousal threshold. You will get a separate abbreviation for palm. It is Google's palm, known as Pathways Language Model. It is the largest language model during launch during April 2022, creating 540 billion parameters. In all these things are is actually the Google's coming up new search engine. In conclusion, to conclude, the crucial proceedings in our understanding of the pathophysiology and heterogeneity of clinical phenotypes urge for new approaches to individualization of the patients in contrast to the traditional focus on PAP only. The concept of targeting treatment on the distinct components of the upper airway collapsibility, muscle responsiveness, and the central aspects of breathing and sleep regulation we need to work up with our pulmonologist colleagues, either with single or in combined therapies offer fascinating options and more research on the efficacy of the non-CPAP therapies, the recombination of various options and outcomes in specific phenotypes is welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.